blockchain. Praised as a world-changing technology, so powerful that it will continue to transform the way we do things. From energy and cybersecurity to finance, healthcare, and transportation, blockchain's potentially revolutionary applications seem endless. Yet for most of us, blockchain remains an enigma. So, what exactly is blockchain? How does it work? And is it really a cure-all medicine for all the world's problems? Let's dive in. In 1907, Gustav Klimt painted the famous portrait of Adele Blockbauer I, known as Lady in Gold. Klimt gave the artwork to the Blockbauer family. During World War II, however, the painting was seized by Nazi agents and placed in the Gallery Belvedere in Vienna. After the war, in 1946, the Blockbauer family sought the return of the wrongfully taken painting, but were turned down by the gallery. The gallery based its rejection on Adele's will, supposedly drawn up in 1923. The will allegedly stated that she wished her portrait to be left to the gallery. The whole dispute took 60 years to settle. It was 2006 when the painting was finally returned to the Blockbauer family, who then sold it to New York's Noyer Gallery co-founder Ronald Lauder for $135 million, the highest price ever paid for a painting at that time. If every legitimate transfer of ownership had been recorded on an immutable blockchain distributed across the globe, that dispute would have been resolved in seconds. And this, my friends, is essentially what blockchain is. For many of us, blockchain is a mystery, enigmatic machinery living in the horizonless depths of our computers. In reality, blockchain is not that complicated. It only seems complicated because it's often explained using complicated techno jargon. At its core, blockchain is just a database, and not a particularly sophisticated one either. You could never run YouTube or Netflix on it, at least not yet. To understand why, we must first understand how blockchain works. So let's deconstruct it and build one from scratch. The main difference between a typical database and a blockchain lies in the data structure. In a typical database, information is usually structured into tables, and you're allowed to edit the existing data in any way you want. You can delete information, add information, shuffle things around. There are practically no limits. Blockchain, however, stores data in chronologically ordered blocks that are linked together via cryptography. This means all the data you enter is irreversible. There are no do-overs or deleting stuff. You're only allowed to read existing data and add new data. So, if previously entered information needs to be amended or changed, you don't rewrite it. Instead, you store the change in a new block. Let's assemble the pieces to see how it works. This is a block. Each block in a blockchain has three main elements. A block hash, also called a block identifier, a hash of the previous block, and some form of data. Bear in mind that this is a simplified block, and we're building a simplified version of the blockchain. An actual cryptocurrency blockchain is a little different. It's got wallets, transaction pools, and a bit more complicated inner workings, but the general operating principles are the same. So for now, let's stick to the simpler version. Whenever a new block is created, we always know the hash of the previous block, so this gets added automatically. First, queued data is entered into the block. The type of data depends on what the blockchain is used for. For example, every block in the Bitcoin blockchain contains details about transactions, including information about the sender, receiver, and amount of coins transferred. Mickey pays Minnie, one Bitcoin. Goofy pays Scrooge, two Bitcoin. Donald pays Stormy, 130,000, and so on. Once the block is full, it's sealed and hashed. Hashing is essentially just data encryption. It's nothing more than passing all the data in the block and the hash of the previous block through an algorithm that turns it into a string of characters. That string of characters becomes a new block hash, only to be turned into the next block's previous hash. The new hash constructed using the old hash is the chain in the blockchain. 
This is also what makes blockchain hard to tamper with. Even the slightest modifications to the data in the block cause the hash of the block to change. That change breaks the link between the next block as the hashes will not match anymore, which in turn renders all the following blocks invalid. So, any changes get instantly rejected. This makes the data on the blockchain immutable. No one can edit what's already stored. By the way, there's a link to an online hash generator in the description if you wish to test hashing algorithms or want to see what your name looks like when hashed. Oh, speaking of algorithms, the one YouTube utilizes really loves when people press that like button. So feel free to test that one out as well. Besides being immutable, blockchains also use distributed ledger technology and consensus mechanisms to leverage safety. That means no single entity owns or controls the data. Instead, there are multiple copies of the blockchain distributed among a network of computers called nodes. So, even if a bad actor runs one of those nodes and somehow manages to successfully meddle with the copy living in his computer, it would no longer match with everyone else's version, and that hacked blockchain would be pushed aside as illegitimate. This does not mean that blockchains are 100% safe, nor does it mean every blockchain operates the same. Some blockchains are federated, others are not. Some are permissioned, others permissionless. So you could theoretically still hack it, but that's the topic for the next video. So if you want to know how to instantly tell blockchains apart and navigate distributed ledgers securely, make sure you subscribe and press that little notification dingy dingy. This way you'll know immediately when we launch that video. Which brings us to the last question. Why blockchain? Anyone starting the answer with the word because should be ignored. Because there is no universal because for every industry. Blockchain has its downsides, most notably scalability. Recording data on a blockchain is much like taking a bus to a neighboring city. There is a waiting time to get onto the bus, and each bus has a fixed capacity. So, if you arrive late or the bus gets full, you must wait for the next one. As a result, getting everyone to their destination takes some time. Add to that the fact that every node must have the exact copy of the blockchain, and you get why it's practically impossible to build a YouTube or Netflix on a decentralized blockchain. 720,000 hours of video gets uploaded to YouTube every single day. Imagine having to download all that day after day after day. That's unimaginable. Despite that, blockchain technology has its clear advantages. It creates a trusted, unfilterable, and uncensorable warehouse of data that's accessible to all worldwide. This is especially useful when it comes to storing everything with value. Not just cryptocurrency transactions, but all things like medical records or electronic votes. The fact that no one can erase the past makes it also perfect for tracking proof of ownership, including ownership of land, real estate, and art. Blockchain can even be used to track environmental impact at each stage of the supply chain. This improved visibility can reveal opportunities for waste and energy reduction. What are your thoughts on the blockchain? Will it stand the test of time? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you can't get enough of blockchain and crypto, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching till the very end and welcome to Behind the Scenes. Like a Genesis block on a blockchain, this is the first video on our newly created YouTube channel. Each video takes roughly one to two months to finish. So if you appreciate what we're doing here, consider subscribing. We aim to publish videos every other week. We started by Block to explore the true potential of blockchain, crypto, and everything decentralized, something we all can truly benefit from. If you're also passionate about democratizing how we store and share value and want to be part of what we do, join the community. Links to the Discord server and Telegram channel are in the description. There you can chat with us, suggest future video topics, and hang out with other like-minded people. We'll see you there.